Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6010. Item Number 6010 Object Class Enochian Item cannot be contained due to its properties constituting an aspect of baseline reality. Special Containment Procedures Currently Containment of SCP-6010 is not possible due to its widespread influence over the civilian population. Preservation of the veil is no longer a priority, efforts are instead to be focused on the rehabilitation of SCP-6010-A instances and the preparation of the global population for future SCP-6010 alterations. Foundation staff altered by SCP-6010 may continue their existing roles in the Foundation following a two-week adjustment period. Description SCP-6010 is the global restructuring event that has currently impacted roughly one-third of all animal life on Earth. Since the 21st of June 2021, life forms in the Animalia Kingdom unpredictably undergo rapid transformation developing into decapodal crustaceans with typical subjects being around 40 centimeters in height. These subjects, hereafter referred to as SCP-6010-A instances, develop a pair of claws on their frontmost limbs as well as a thick chitinous exoskeleton over a flat disc-like body. Instances of SCP-6010-A are primarily aquatic, but can survive out of water indefinitely as long as their gills hold a layer of water. Their middle six legs are typically used for walking on the sea floor, while their backmost legs are flatter and used for swimming. Despite these extreme biological changes, SCP-6010-A instances that were previously human retain a human level of consciousness and all memories formed before the transformation. There is no known way to revert SCP-6010-A instances back into their previous forms. Since SCP-6010 began, animal life on Earth has been transformed into SCP-6010-A instances at an exponential rate, with current estimates placing the completion of SCP-6010 around the middle of 2028. Addendum 1 The following transcript was taken from the video series The New Carcinized World, made by Dr. Francis Hernandez, the lead researcher for SCP-6010. Hernandez communicated using a text-to-speech program, and a keyboard specially designed for their claws. Coming out of your shell. Begin log. Hello. Right now, there are two types of people on this planet. Either you've already been changed like me, or you're just waiting for the inevitable. Either way, you're here to know what it feels like and how you will continue life as close to normally as you can. I know it may be upsetting to see your body go through these changes, but rest assured, we here at the SCP Foundation are doing everything we can to make the transition easier. The video cuts to footage of a Foundation-run rehabilitation center, showing many human Foundation staff and civilian volunteers assisting newly transformed SCP-6010-A instances adjust to their new bodies. Hernandez continues speaking off-screen. It may take weeks or even months, but once you grow accustomed to the new you, it'll feel like you never had a human body. The scene changes to a small underwater apartment complex designed to be inhabited by SCP-6010-A instances. Several can be seen walking through the building. Just remember, there's nothing wrong with being a crab. End log. The Foundation currently maintains four settlements designed to accommodate SCP-6010-A instances that do not wish or are unable to remain in their previous homes. Each settlement features housing for roughly 5 million SCP-6010-A instances in apartment complexes, as well as sustainable algae farms and tidal power generation. 
Foundation personnel who have become SCP-6010-A instances are permitted to transfer to these settlements at the discretion of their respective site director. Settlement Current Status Settlement Alpha, Atlantis II, located alongside the Great Barrier Reef. City is autonomous to the point that it requires little Foundation intervention. Settlement Beta, Nart, located in the Mediterranean Sea. City has created a self-sustaining economy with Settlement Delta, and does not require Foundation intervention. Settlement Gamma, Crust, located in the Gulf of Mexico. City is currently under Foundation control to moderate mass immigration from the USA. Settlement Delta, New London, located in the English Channel. City is under control of the European Union and requires no Foundation intervention. In addition to these settlements, the Foundation has funded a global campaign to assist SCP-6010 instances in adjusting to their new bodies. This campaign is organized by the Ethics Committee and employs Foundation staff experienced in anomalous bodily transformations and civilian volunteers. These volunteers are given level zero clearance and access only to a limited selection of this file. The following transcript was taken from the video series Talk to the Clause, made by Dr. Francis Hernandez. Talk to the Clause Episode 1 Begin Log Welcome to another guide to your new life. One thing you may have noticed about your new body is the inability to speak. Well the SCP Foundation has the help you need, in Crab Sign Language, or CSL for short. In this video series, I'll be showing you some of the most common phrases you'll need to learn to get by in the SCP-6010 resettlement facilities. Before we begin, remember that when saying a name or other proper noun, you'll have to spell it out one letter at a time. Just check the link in the description that you'll find a chart of every letter in the CSL alphabet. Once you know all the letters, we'll move on to a few simple greetings. Starting with, hello. The video shows Hernandez pressing their right claw up to their head, and bringing it down to the side. That's all it is. Pretty simple really. Let's do something a bit longer. A basic introduction for your name. You say my name and then you spell whatever your name is. The video shows Hernandez pressing their right claw against their abdomen, tapping the pincers of both claws together twice, and spelling out H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z. And that's all you need to introduce yourself as a crab. Join us tomorrow for more handy tips. Or should I say classy tips? End log. Any individuals fluent in CSL are eligible to volunteer in their local SCP-6010-A rehabilitation facility. To do so, please submit a copy of the following form to SCP-6010-HELP at sitenet.com. Currently 1,573 SCP objects have become SCP-6010-A instances. Of these entities, 107 lost all other anomalous effects after the transformation. It is currently believed this happened because they were dependent on the entity maintaining their current form. The SCP objects that retained their anomalous effects have had their containment procedures updated accordingly. Many Keter class anomalies are being tested to determine optimal containment procedures that can still be carried out when the anomaly or the majority of containment staff become SCP-6010-A instances. To accommodate large numbers of anomalous SCP-6010-A instances, the Foundation has begun construction of multiple underwater facilities replicating existing sites. Currently the only functional underwater facility is Site 19-C, which currently houses 100 anomalies and 300 Foundation staff members. The following transcript was taken from the video shown to Foundation staff members upon transfer to the newly constructed Site 19-C. Hernandez communicated using CSL, with subtitles provided below. Sinking to New Depths Welcome to your new site. Begin log. 
The video shows the Site 19-C cafeteria, which features three algae bars and a large kitchen, as well as seating for 200. Hernandez walks into the shot, waving to the camera. Hello, and welcome to another SCP-6010 orientation video. If you are watching this, it means you've been reassigned to one of our Dash C sites, which are foundation sites designed to be used by people like us. There's only one right now, but there's loads more on the way. The scene changes to a side view graphic of the ocean, with a foundation site being built at the bottom. Hernandez is visible on the bottom left corner. When these sites are built, we pick specific places in the ocean for warm temperatures and easy access to outdoor areas. While going for a walk on the ocean floor takes some getting used to, it's perfectly safe and even encouraged during scheduled break times. The graphic shows many Foundation staff members walking outside the site on the ocean floor. It then changes to a scene of several new researchers taking notes on an anomaly under containment. You may be asking yourself, how do we operate at the same level as before when we're underwater? Well, our research teams have been working around the clock to offer you the latest and greatest in underwater technology. Computers, tablets, even your trusty keycards have been redesigned for not only underwater use, but have been made as easy to use with claws as they were with hands. The scene changes to the D-class holding cells which are all occupied by instances of SCP-6010-A. One of the more popular changes SCP-6010 has brought to our facilities is the cancellation of human testing protocols. Since every animal on the planet is a crab like us, there's no need to test potentially dangerous anomalies on intelligent beings capable of feeling pain. We just use crabs that used to be insects or other lesser life forms incapable of feeling anything. While they do look like us, their ant minds have already been shattered when they turned into crabs. Just watch. Hernandez pokes one of the D-class through the cell bars. The D-class does not respond. They even regenerate limbs like us, which makes them partially reusable. The scene changes to an anomalous SCP-6010-A instance in its containment cell being observed by several staff members. Most of the living anomalies down here are also like us, but they're still anomalies. Don't let your guard down just because a keter is a crab. A very aggressive SCP-6010-A instance is seen attacking the cell door. When working with these anomalies, remember that it is possible their properties have changed since they were transformed. Human staff members are seen cleaning out an old containment cell. A large partially carcinized corpse covered in acid burns is in the center of the room. Speaking of anomalies changing their properties, I'd like you all to look to the people watching this video with you now. There's a good chance that one of them had some minor anomalous property that was wiped away by SCP-6010. Some may have even had an SCP number at one point. Make sure to treat them the same way you would any other coworker in the new foundation. The scene changes to the Site 19-C cafeteria, which is filled with instances of SCP-6010-A. They all look to the camera and wave. And that concludes our orientation. We await you in the sea, new crabs. End log. Currently Foundation staff have recognized 12 anomalies that would be infeasible to contain following the completion of SCP-6010. The decision to neutralize these anomalies is currently under Ethics Committee review. Addendum 2. Current status of various groups of interest as of 2024. Goy current status. Ambrose Restaurants declared bankruptcy shortly after it was discovered that certain items on the menu contained SCP-6010-A instances that were previously human. Anderson Robotics began development of SCP-6010-A piloted utility droids designed to assist SCP-6010-A instances in returning to their previous lives.
Global Occult Coalition has engaged in global peacekeeping operations to protect the interests of countries which have lost the majority of their leaders to SCP-6010. Mana Charitable Foundation has assisted the Foundation in the aid of humans who have lost all sources of income due to SCP-6010 as well as the recruitment of volunteers. Marshall, Carter and Dart Limited Mr. Carter became an instance of SCP-6010-A and was removed from the company after spending an unapproved 100 billion US dollars attempting to reverse the effects of SCP-6010. The remaining members remain in control of the company, but have lost a significant portion of their revenue due to the rapidly changing economy. Sarkic cults The majority of Sarkocytes were too heavily mutated to survive the transformation process, remaining members are considered to be a minimal threat. The Serpent's Hand The majority of Hand members moved the Wanderer's Library before cutting all connections to this reality. Remaining members have either joined other groups of interest or volunteered in SCP-6010-A rehabilitation centers. Unusual Incidents Unit defunct following the collapse of the American government after the entirety of their leadership became instances of SCP-6010-A human operatives are currently working under the GORP to elect a new government body. Wilson's Wildlife Solutions has assisted the Foundation in the care of SCP-6010-A instances as well as the recruitment of volunteers. Numerous other smaller groups have been affected by SCP-6010 to a lesser degree. Due to the Foundation and Gork's increased influence over global affairs, especially in the SCP-6010-A settlements, very little anomalous activity has actively threatened the population since the beginning of SCP-6010. To deal with newly discovered anomalies, many mobile task forces have been reorganized to operate under these new conditions. MTF Gamma-6, Deep Feeders, has been placed in charge of coordinating underwater operations, and have assisted Dr. Hernandez in the production of the following video. Mobile Crab Force Begin Log The video begins with a scene of MTF Gamma-6 pre-SCP-6010 investigating an underwater anomalous structure. The scene fades to an identical shot of the team after becoming instances of SCP-6010-A. Hi, my name is Roger, and I'm the commanding officer of MTF Gamma-6. In this video, we'll be teaching you how to handle anomaly retrieval deep underwater. The first major difference is the body armor. Thanks to these tough shells, we don't need as much as we did in our weak skin sacks. Still, it can't hurt to be prepared so we have some Kevlar pads that strap onto your abdomen and claws. The second major difference is the weapons. Obviously handheld guns don't work anymore, so we've got something a little more interesting for you. Hernandez walks into frame holding a MKICT assault weapon. This here is the most recent advancement in crab weaponry, capable of firing up to three shells per minute. Hernandez begins helping G1 attach the cannon. In the field, these things are a godsend. It may not be the fastest gun, but it packs enough of a punch to take down even the toughest anomalies. G1 activates the cannon on its back and fires at a target on the back wall. The wall crumples from the impact. The cannon can be activated with the firing pin next to your front left leg. Just give it a flick and it'll fire. The next thing we're going to cover is underwater operations. When tasked with anomaly retrieval, you may find yourself traveling deep into kelp forests or into wrecked ships from the old times. You'd be surprised how many anomalies we find in shipwrecks. The scene changes to Gamma-6 exploring an abandoned nuclear submarine. They swim through to the empty missile silos and discover an anomalous instance of SCP-6010-A. The anomaly attempts to flee, but G-2 fires an explosive shell over its head. The anomaly panics and activates its anomalous effects, causing the submarine to reactivate and begin to rise. If you encounter a living anomaly, it's important to bring it in alive unless your life is in danger. That's why we've developed the Avolti Taser, a device capable of delivering stunning electric shocks to nearby crabs. Just pinch your claws together on the trigger, 
and anyone you're pointing at will be stunned for long enough to get them under control. G3 stuns the anomaly and the submarine ceases to function. The team places elastics on the anomaly's claws and returns it to their own submarine. And with those gadgets, you'll be able to handle almost any anomaly that gets thrown at you. Good luck in the open waters, crabs. End log. Addendum 3. Current status of large foundation sites as of 2026. Site number current status. 11 used as a base of operations for North American resettlement operations, before being used to house human civilians displaced by the collapse of the USA. Sold to the Gork to assist their peace efforts in the region, currently vacant. 17 after many anomalies were carcinized, the site was repurposed into a rehabilitation facility for Foundation personnel. As of 2026, the site is no longer operational and is used for storage purposes. 19 All anomalous entities have been relocated to Site 19 C personnel have relocated to various sites. The empty site is now awaiting demolition to remove any lasting anomalous effects preventing the facility from being reused. 77 initially served as a base of operations for resettlement efforts in Europe. Now used for storage. 81 following the carcinization of the majority of staff, drains were opened above the site, flooding it from the lake above, allowing it to remain operational after modifications. Most smaller sites have had their inventories relocated to their sea equivalents, and the empty facility decommissioned. Recently, an interview was conducted with Dr. Hernandez concerning their research into SCP-6010. A transcript of the interview was recorded below. Interview 6010-1 Interviewed, Francis Hernandez, SCP-6010 Research Head. Interviewer, 05-1. Date, the 19th of May 2028. Begin log. Hello, Doctor. Good to see you again, sir. Hard to imagine it's been seven years. It feels like the time just flew by. It's hard to keep track of the days when we're dealing with something like this. Don't I know it? Managing the restructuring of the Foundation, let alone normal society. Not something I ever want to do again. How many times have you said that? Heh, I suppose you've got a point. I suppose the point of this discussion is my findings on carcinization? Yes. We'd like to know what you've discovered. Honestly? Not much. At first we thought it could have been some angry god's revenge, or maybe some sort of paravirus. But after a while, we realized there was nothing to find. It just happened, plain and simple. No cult of faithful was spared, no patterns were found in who got turned first. At the end of the day, some things just happen and can't be helped. It's funny. So many people feel a need to understand the things that don't make sense. But that's not what the Foundation does. At the end of the day, if the world is still in one piece we've done our jobs. And we pulled through in the end, same as always. Some may say we came out better than before. If we found a cure today, would people even take it? Perhaps. But there's nothing left for us on land. Besides, I've seen a lot of anomalies come and go in my time, 6010 wouldn't be the first to change the world's one piece. 6010. I almost forgot that number. It's been so long since I got my shell, I can't remember what life was like without one. It feels like just yesterday you were making those videos to help the new crabs. I remember I considered letting you make a video to help the rest of the council. That would have been a fun project, if I didn't get my mind wiped after. Speaking of those videos, I never actually made a proper ending to the series. Maybe this interview can be the finale? How do you want to end it? I suppose a thank you, 
to all the people who helped repair this world, and to everyone who watched along to the end. End log. Hide update. As of the 5th of October 2032, the events detailed in this file are no longer considered anomalous. It has been given the designation SCP-6010-ARC to avoid clutter in the main database. It will remain archived for historical reference, along with all other ARC files caused by the restructuring. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations. Of